Have you ever found yourself in front of an undergraduate research methods or statistics class and no one is paying attention? Have you ever found it hard to pay attention to yourself without falling asleep? Then have we got a solution for you. Today, on Educational Challenges in the New Millennium, we welcome Professor Alexander Swan from UCSB, who's going to tell us about a little problem he's been encountering, and we'll see if we can't do something to help him out. Welcome, Alex. Thanks for having me, Molly. Thanks for joining us today. Now, why don't you tell us a little about the problems you've been having? Well, Molly, as you know, I teach psychology, which is a very popular major. However, most psych programs require research methods and stats courses to graduate, and these classes aren't received nearly as well as our content courses. I don't understand. Statistics sounds like so much fun. What's the problem? Well, my team and I have identified three major issues that contribute to the distaste for these courses. First, misconceptions about psychology abound. Most majors enter with the expectation of being clinical psychologists and are dismayed when they are faced with research methods and statistics. Furthermore, students unaware of the psychological science often enter the field because they think they're not good at science or math. As a result, we end up with students who A, don't think methods or stats are important, and B, don't think they're capable of achieving success in these classes. Second, stats and methods are typically taught in isolation from the rest of content courses, resulting in a disconnect and a failure to see the value of these foundational courses and understanding the rest of psychology. Finally, the fact that these are required courses impede motivation from the beginning, and when they serve as gateway courses for the rest of the major, they are also fraught with anxiety. So all of these together lead to low interest, low perceived value, high anxiety, and a nightmare for the instructor. Wow, that is a lot. But you know, I am so glad you brought your challenge to us because we have just the solution for you. Really, Molly? Really, Alex. Today, I'm going to walk you and our viewers through a two-pronged solution designed to address a number of the issues you raised and to provide an unparalleled educational experience for your students. Our solution aims to engage students in all class sizes and at all levels in the research process and to personalize the process for each individual student. That sounds great, but it also sounds like so much work. I would love to personalize a class for everyone, but sometimes I teach classes of 150 students or more. No problem at all. Our solution integrates an existing technology called Zaps and an up-and-coming adaptive learning-based set technology to remove the onus of personalization from the instructor and still achieve results. <laughs> Zaps? Adaptive learning? It's like you're speaking another language. Well, let me walk you through it. Zaps, the Norton Psychology Lab, from the good folks at WW Norton & Company, is an online tool that allows students to participate at every stage of classic social and cognitive psychology studies. Because they offer so many options, we will first assess the interests of your students to place them in groups that will run studies most relevant to their interests. I see what you're doing here. By involving their interests from the beginning, this should also increase intrinsic motivation from the class early on. You got it, Alex. Now let me walk you through an example of the ZAPS project on stereotypes. In this example, students are first given a hypothetical situation which illustrates the importance of possible discrepancies between implicit and explicit attitudes. The students are then introduced to the IAT, or the Implicit Attitudes Test, designed by Greenwald and colleagues. Zaps explains very clearly the design of a classic IAT study and then has students perform the task themselves. Now, what if I want the whole class to learn about the IAT? Does every group have to do that module? Not at all. Each group will only act as experimenters for one project, but will be participants in every project. This will give them exposure to a number of experimental paradigms and also provide robust data sets for each group. That's great. In the next step, students are able to see their own individual performance on the experimental task. Finally, the last screen describes the interpretation of the data in more detail and couches the demonstration in a larger theoretical context. Wow, Molly. I can definitely see how going through this process can help dispel some of the common misconceptions about psychological science. That's the plan, Alex. After completing the individual ZAPS process, students will have access to the whole class data set. 
As a group, they'll be introduced to SPSS, a common data analysis software program. This is great. Our students don't often even see SPSS for the first time until their advanced lab classes when they're seniors, after some of them have already applied to graduate school. That'll no longer be an issue, Alex. Using SPSS, students will use their knowledge of statistics gained in lecture to test their hypothesis. Finally, as individuals, they will write an APA-style methods and results section, graduating to more complete papers in advanced courses. They will engage in structured peer review, ultimately turning in the paper as part of their final grade. Molly, getting students interested in research is a f great first step, but students who are resistant or nervous won't be served by being forced through a process they don't understand or like. Alex, you are so right. And this is where the adaptive learning platform comes in. There's more? There's more. The goal of using an adaptive learning platform is to personalize the learning experience for each student. Adaptive learning technology uses user performance data as well as global trend to assess student progress and recommend lessons or activities to suit the specific student's needs. Wait, this sounds familiar. Is it kind of like the new GRE where the difficulty of each question assigned is based on the student performance on previous questions? Yeah, you have the right idea. Our solution is much more interactive. For example, after going through the first part of the ZAPS assignment, students will be assessed on their understanding of the experiment in which they just participated. Based on their performance, each student will be assigned a next step. Students who show large gaps in understanding will review the troublesome concepts before proceeding. Students who are on target will proceed to the next step, in this case, writing a first draft. For students who are excelling, they'll go to the next step, but will also be given supplementary readings or activities meant to keep them engaged, not bored. We could also use the assessments and the original interest inventory to customize the supplementary material, providing students access to the things they will find most engaging. Exactly! And this process of assessing, diagnosing, and supplementing is an iterative one and will take place at each stage of the ZAPS assignment. Yes, by assessing understanding at every step of the process, we can confront misconceptions as they arise and soothe performance anxiety by taking students at their own pace. Oh, Molly, this is going to revolutionize my classroom. I'm glad you think so, Alex. But you still look a little concerned. What else can we do for you today? Well, this whole process sounds great, but I'm worried that with all the group work and personalization, I won't be able to communicate all the content necessary to successfully complete the course. I see what you're saying. So it's important that I point out that all of this is happening concurrently with a traditionally formatted class. Especially with intro classes, we need to balance the need to provide a large amount of information with getting and keeping students engaged. With our solution, students will work hard, yes, but we'll also get to see the concepts come alive in their own projects. Wow, Molly. This has been incredibly helpful. I can't wait to try out your new solution in my own classes. I expect a revolution. Our ultimate goal is not to create a master race of psychological scientists. We simply want to introduce students to the wonder we feel when engaging with research, to see its value, and to openly engage with it again in the future. Thank you for joining us. We're not papers that are trying to hear my favorite thing at school. All that's going to be really wrong. Written, performed, and produced by Alexander B. Swan and Molly A. Metz.